Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ServiceNow 911. In the series of change management, today we discuss part 3. And in this, we discuss about normal change, starting for the demo, definition, configuration, everything. Okay, in last video in part 2, you see here we have discussed complete analysis of a change that is standard one. Okay, so you can go through this one or you can go through the part 1. That is the basics of change management. So now, let's discuss normal change so what is a normal change any change that is not a standard or emergency is known as normal change this is one of the so this is one of the most vague definition which i have seen it will not give you any much clue so these are the points which will provide you exactly what is a normal change normal change request follow a perspective process which require two level of approvals before being implemented reviewed and closed these changes require full range of assessment and authorization such as peer technical approval, change management as well as cab authorization to ensure completeness, accuracy and the least possible disruption of the service. So basically a normal change is the one which follow a complete standard. It will follow all the states. It will require all kind of assessments. It will require all kind of authorizations before being implemented reviewed and closed it means you have to follow all the standards you have to follow a proper plan you have a backup plan you have implementation plan you must have all kind of testing plans as well so we can say the change which follows all the workflow which follow all the protocols is known as a normal change let's come to next point these changes are often scheduled outside the defined change blackout window or during the maintenance windows as we know that these changes might have a huge impact. That's why it is advisable to implement such changes in the maintenance window where the number of users who are logged in or the number of users who are online are less or probably no. So now let's go to the instance and see how to create a normal change. I will provide one example also there. If you come here, go to change application. Click on create new. Under models, you have the option to create a normal change. One thing you notice here, we are not able to create a normal change from service catalog or from any other place. Mostly the people who are having a change role, that is the people who are ITI role, are able to create a standard change. Because this is not an ordinary one, this required 100% dedication. That's why the company is not taking any kind of risk to create a normal change. Or in service now, we have seen that we can create changes directly from incident and problem. All three type of changes. But generally, only emergency changes are created via incidents. Because we need to fix service as soon as possible, we may not have all kind of plans ready in case of emergency change. That's why people create directly uh, from incident. Okay. So here, let's provide the value. Category should be software. Service, let's select SAP controlling and CI in configuration item. We have SAP Ariba priority is let's say moderate risk is high as well as the impact is medium. OK, so now this is our use case. What I'm going to do, I am deleting a SAP type named field from the CMDB table. As CMDB table is a very huge table and it is associated with many other tables as well. That's why deleting a field from CMDB table may have huge impact. It may have performance impact. It may have functionality impact with respect to reporting, with respect to other stuff. Okay, because higher management is also getting many reports with respect to this CMDB table. That's why this change comes under the category of a normal change because we have to plan everything. We have to take all the approvals, authorizations from the stakeholders. So that's what I have written here. Delete SAP type field from CMDB table. So why I am deleting this field? I am deleting this field. You will see that thing in planning section. Click here. What is the justification? The justification is the field is outdated. A new field is available for the same purpose. So why it is happening because we recently upgraded the system and the vendor has come up with a new field and outdated this current SAP type field. So that's why the business decided to delete this field. 
to avoid any kind of complication for the users and the stakeholders. What is the implementation plan? We are moving this with the help of update sets. Okay, we are capturing it in the sub production instances and then finally moving it into the production one. What is the risk? As I told you, it may have performance degradation as well as reporting risk. Okay, and what is the backout plan? If anything goes wrong, what we will do, we will back out the update set. And then we have the test plan. To test it, we are doing all the verifications manually, like checking the field in the form view, checking the field in the list view, as well as checking the dictionaries. So this is a very basic requirement which I have provided so that you will understand the concept clearly. Okay, so now we have the planning ready. Now second thing is we have to schedule it as well. So, so I want to schedule it in Saturday, Sunday. Let's click on Saturday starting point and then provide Sunday as a ending point. Plan start date and plan end date. I need cab authorization as well. When I want to do that, I want to do it on Friday. What is actual start date, actual end date? These dates will automatically filled up by the system when we reach to the implementation state. Just bear with me, I will tell you each and everything properly. What is cab delegate? You can easily understand. Just look into this message. What is the cab recommendation? So after the cab meeting, whatever decision has been taken will be written down here by any of the stakeholder. So this is it. Now we have to save it. So now my change is created here. I have to click on request approval so that the process will get start so that we move to the next step that is assessment. Okay, before that, let me tell you about conflicts. So what is a conflict? So within the scheduling window, if there is any other change or there is any other activities happening with respect to the CI which we have selected, then the system will tell you, okay, this is also happening with respect to your CI. So in that case, we have to get in touch with the associated team and balance out the thing, okay? Because we are making changes in the same thing within the same time frame. So that's why the system is implicitly telling me to do so, okay? That's why we are getting conflict. So the conflict is not in a maintenance window. As we already discussed that normal change are supposed to be, you know, implemented in the maintenance window so that the number of users are less. That's why we are getting this particular conflict here because the scheduling time is not in the maintenance window. So what is the maintenance window? What all conflict we can create? So all this can be created within a table. Okay, all these are self configurable thing based on your organization. You can create your maintenance window. You can create n number of conflicts with respect to a particular change request. Right now this is demo. So all this is scheduled out of box with respect to service now ITIL change request. Okay, so that's what we are getting here. Apart from conflict, I will tell you one more thing. What is affected CI and what is impacted CI? You see in affected CI, we have the SAP Ariba. That is a configuration item. This is the item in which the changes are done. Okay. So affected CI is something where we are making the changes. And with respect to that changes, wherever there is an impact is known as impacted CI. Okay. So what is the impacted CI here? SAP controlling. So you see at the top, where is SAP controlling? It is in the service. So this is obvious because we are making change in this particular CI and because of that, the services may get impacted. That's why we are seeing the service name here and the same is coming under impacted CI. So I hope you understand both these things. Let's move forward. Let's click on request approval. Oops, we have to provide assignment group as well because that's where the assessment will go. Let's say it is done by database Atlanta team and it is assigned to a gentleman Bo Rugri. So now click on request approval. The change will move forward to next date. That is assessment here. If you scroll to the bottom, you will see the approval somewhere. Yes. The approval is now with the database Atlanta group and the approval is Bo because he is the assigned to person here. So now Bo will see and Bo will do all kind of assessment based on this change, what change you want to do. Okay, because he is from the same team. So once he is satisfied, 
he will come here and click on approve if bo reject it the change will close remember all this because we can cancel the change from 1 2 3 4 5 till implementation okay so at any level if any of the stakeholder feel we should cancel it they have the option to reject it again we are now in authorization state what comes in authorization you know that is cab approval if you come down you will see it is automatically going to cab approval and in cab approval group you will see all these people so who are these people these are the people from different different application different different modules with respect to this particular change okay who may or may not get impacted so all these people will sit together in the cab meeting they will understand the need they will understand what changes are going on and they will discuss whether it is impacting each other or other or not okay so if they come up with a final discussion that okay we are fine they will approve it otherwise they will deny it that is they will reject it so now let's say they approve it after approval it will go to the next state that is scheduling as we already have the scheduling window right remember actual start and actual end date is yet not failed because we are not at the implementation state so now we have to click on implement button because we are now going to implement okay I will not wait for the whole weekend here <laughs> as I am admin I am able to click on implement but when we come to actual scenarios only when the times come then only you will be able to see this implement button right now because of admin I am able to do it so now click on implement as soon as we click on implement you will see the actual start date starts okay so the date is exactly the same time when I clicked on implement button but it is not yet complete that's why you are not able to see the end date scroll down you will see two tasks here one task is implementation task second task is post implementation testing task so now the assigned two person that is Bo it is his responsibility to work on these tasks or to delegate these tasks to someone else from where we are getting these tasks we are getting these tasks from the flows okay previously it was workflow but now service now has the flow available and because of those flows we are getting these tasks I have provided more explanation about this in our last video so please visit it you will understand it properly so now let's open the very first task that is implementation one the same group is doing it database Atlanta and Bo is the person who is working on it he will come here under closure and say successful provide some notes and said implemented okay now click on close task so one task is now closed but yet this is empty because there is second task as well so let's go to the second task again let's say the same person work on it Bo test it again successfully okay click on close task so both the tasks are closed now implementation is complete now come here you will see the actual end date also because actual implementation is now complete so now it's just a review so who will review it this will be reviewed by the person who has requested the change or the group who has requested the change right now here it is me that is Omenda so he will see all the changes and once he is satisfied he will come here and update the notes sign off okay so now the user said everything is looking good I am providing signing off okay and save the case so once he provided his comment a notification will be sent to the people that is to the database Atlanta group and they see okay the user is now reviewed it he is fine so now they will come here and simply close this particular change but he has to provide some closure notes successful and customer signed off close it so now ladies and gentlemen this change is closed I hope you understand the complete process of a normal change now what is a normal change what is example of a normal change how we traverse a normal change what is uh, conflict what is the difference between affected ci impacted ci each and everything i have explained you in a very proper way still if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section subscribe to the channel thank you so much bye bye